Well, I, uh, I sp sponsored it. The framing mill came just before uh, Gas Gallery and Studio was was open, uh, and I the framing mill sponsored a few of the tours. When Gas Gallery came along and Meek and I opened it up, it was just a no-brainer to continue sponsoring in a, in a much different fashion and actually hosting some some artists who needed alternate venues. So it was just a win-win. It was uh, the, the perfect scenario and a nice balance for the community. We actually met through family. Um, we connected through my wife, Elizabeth. But as far as our endeavor here at GAS, uh, Rick had been looking for a place to extend his exhibition schedule at the framing mill. And I, at the time, was looking for a photography studio. I'm a photographer and graphic designer by day and needed a place outside of the home to conduct my business, a place that could accommodate my lighting and my backdrops and a uh, more professional appearance for my clients to come meet me. So we happened to catch each other peeking in through the window the same afternoon when we noticed that the previous tenant was moving out and kind of noticed the light bulb above each other's heads, figuring that this would be a, a great uh, symbiotic relationship creatively. It would give us both what we were looking for and um, that's kind of where the multi-use space aspect came out of it. Yeah, we're both photographers. Um, we both have, I think, a, a different subject matter that we're attracted to and different approaches to our photography, but the one thing that I do like about our photography is that we're um, very experimental. I don't think we put many boundaries on what it is we photograph. And we like to play with the medium and kind of push its boundaries and see where we go. This piece here, um, it's a, it started out as a digital photography. I work primarily in digital and as a graphic designer, it's um, a very quick step over the line creatively into graphic visuals. Uh, this started as a photograph that uh, then applied some uh, digital manipulation techniques um, and what I tried to do with this series in particular but with with foot with photography you know the more commercial and straightforward photography that I do um, I try to find ways to take it out of that realm of realism and push it into a more fine art fine art and, and experimental uh, level and try to find the, the, the different levels of beauty within a given image. Uh, it's, it's more about the look and the feel, the color palette, you know. Um, I think that there is a tendency, there, there are uh, die-hard film people who will shun digital as a medium. Um, I myself have learned to love the bomb, so to speak, you know, it's here, it's not going anywhere, it's just going to become more evolved, and you're going to be able to do more, you're going to, as technology improves, you're going to be able to get visually closer to what was happening at the beginning of photography, with the garotypes and various film plates and chemicals that were available at the turn of the century. So you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Most people can't. And the beauty of it is there is so much that can be done with the digital software that like a painter with paint or wax or any other medium pushing pixels so to speak opens up a whole new world of discovery in art and there are a million different ways to get to the same place and starting at the same place there are a million different ways to go Along with what Mika said about um, traditional photography, I came out of the dark room. Uh, my love for black and white photography uh, has been since, since I was probably in my early teens. Um, and it's ironic that I, I never um, took it on as an occupation. It's still kind of a hobby, but a, a much 
stronger hobby than it's ever been. It's, it's part of me. Um, and it's because of the dark room that I'm where I'm sitting today in Gas Gallery Studio with Mika. Uh, I love the dark room, but I don't have time. So digital has offered me the opportunity to, and I'm a little impatient too, offered me the opportunity to see an immediate result. Um, and I was introduced about a year ago to the iPhone. I've known about it, but never had it. Uh, and this happens to be an iPhone photograph. Um, a lot of my newer work I've, uh, or my newer presentations of work, I've taken from uh, digital imagery with a uh, camera that I had and iPhone, but I've uh, incorporated the same image but inverted them and played with them a little bit to create uh, one larger piece um, and just kind of play with the mind a little bit. It's uh, it's a it's a departure for me because I was always very much into detail. So having a, a more abstract image for me is um, was a stretch, and appreciating it and uh, through the gallery and through my exposure to various artists and styles, um, I've been opened up to a lot a wider range of imagery, and I accept the more abstract in my life. So it's nice. me quite a bit. I was actually raised in Maplewood. Uh, my mother, I come from a very artistic family. Um, so, and I had, I had left, I left for about 12 years and I found my way back and then all of a sudden I've got a business and training and now a gallery. So the, the art community here in Maplewood is, uh, there's nothing that really compares. I've been to a lot of little tours in, in New York and thinking that because I'm going to New York, I'm going to see this, this grand art it's really not that much better. I mean, the, the, I think the true artists live out here and are, are trying to live and, and exist and continue to grow. And the community is very supportive in Maplewood, South Orange. I agree. Um, it's certainly a concentrated population of creativity here in South Orange, Maplewood. Uh, and maybe because it's here, surrounded by the more urban areas that there's this little kind of bubble almost that people feel comfortable creating and sharing. And I don't sense much competition between artists. I really sense a much more supportive uh, environment of artistry happening out here. And for me, uh, I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. And along my travels across country, you know, I've realized that it's very easy to want to document or photograph a grand scene of some sort. But I think it's a much greater challenge to find the, uh, find the grandness within the mundane. So, the you know, the things that we see every day, the things that we pass every day, the things that we discard or, or uh, just ignore every day that are such a part of our lives that we don't pay attention to it. I think it's um, a unique opportunity to force oneself to focus on capturing or remembering that that stuff is there, that that's the foundation for everything else. And so by taking that you know, microscopic approach, we, we achieve you know, a macrocosm. We get to see the big picture within the small things. And I think that that's a really unique um, uh, push and pull creatively. I think it, it, it brings a lot to the surface. Rick and I are very happy to say that this past January, Gas Gallery and Studio celebrated its third anniversary. Been open for three years. Uh, we've still got a little bit of gas in the tank and we're gonna keep it going as long as we can, but we've been uh, very proud of being involved and, and sponsoring who we can and what we can of the Soma Tour. It's been an important uh, and integral part of who we are to be a part of the greater community. Here at Gas Gallery will be Kathy Cantwell and Elizabeth Carroll Winchester and Rick and I will be next door at the Framing Mill on uh, June 2nd. Two doors down. That's it. <laughs>